Las Vegas wins the Jack Eichel lottery. How much will that pun be used this year? And Kaprizov gets back to his scoring ways. Well, probably. Plus, we'll debate which wild player we think is the early, early, early season MVP. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge, and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is season three, episode 98. Be sure to join the Marcus Foligno fan club by purchasing your official tee at sodastick.com. A portion of all proceeds will go toward the Janice Foligno Foundation. And don't forget to snag 15% off all purchases with code BARDOWNBEAUTIES at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. We're back. Episode 98. So much closer to episode 100. (laughs) I don't know what we're going to do for it, but, you know, tune in because it's going to be great. Probably it's going to be epic. And we've got some great cues on our YouTube exclusive. Mm -hmm. Be sure to go over and check that out in segment three up for debate. I'm sure uh, everyone knows where that's going with Marcus (laughs) being an option, but you never know. Maybe we'll I love how everyone came for me. They're like, oh, there's no bias in this. I'm like, first of all, you're assuming I I made this graphic, which I did, but she did fair of you guys to assume. You absolutely (laughs) did. Also, it's a fair option. So get off my back. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, he's we'll get into it. Just, you know, tease. Tease. That's called a tease, guys. That's what Check out segment three. <laughs> Check out segment three. Stay, stick around for that. Vegas wins the Jack Ica lottery. They cash in. Cha-ching. Insert every single lottery <laughs> betting pun. Don't forget to go to betteredge.com. B-E-T-T-R edge.com. <laughs> uh, there's that slide in. Um, no, I mean, Alexis, who wins that that trade? I mean, they Vegas sends Peyton Krebs, a mm-hmm. fantastic future prospect, Alex Tuck, who Minnesota Wild fans either Adios. love or hate. I love him. I mean, I knew he was going to do good things, and there he did it. Uh, good thing he's from New York because maybe he won't hate Buffalo sure. as much. And then a couple first rounders. I mean, that's a, that's a haul for Jack Eichel, who still needs to get a surgery, but he does get mm-hmm. to get his surgery that he wanted in Vegas. Winner, is it Vegas or is it Buffalo? Well, I think this is one of those situations where it's still like too early to tell because I mean, it always feels that way with the trade um, for the most part, but especially in this situation, like for one, we knew that this was going to be a big haul for Jack Eichel. Like they refused to back down on what they wanted for Jack Eichel. So it was either going to be like, all right, well then you're going to wait a long time for someone to want to give you this, or he's not going to get traded like one or the other. And so he eventually got drawn out and Vegas ended up giving up all of that to get Jack Eichel. Um, so it's not surprising necessarily what they gave up because I think we knew all along that's kind of what it was going to look like for whoever ended up uh, snagging him. Um, but the thing that makes me wonder, like, well, how is this all going to play out? He still has to get his surgery. He sounds excited to be in Vegas. So that's always something that is promising when, when, you know, a player, I mean, to be fair, he's going to be excited to be anywhere, but anywhere, Buffalo, which is right. a sentiment every player, I think in the same feels, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like that's promising where he seems excited to be in a new spot in, with a new team. I um, mean, Vegas is a good team. So, right. He's got a chance to be a part of something good in Vegas. Um, but you don't know how the surgery is going to play out. You never know how players are going to respond after a surgery or after a big trade like that. So I don't know who won this yet. All I know is Vegas did give up a lot. So you better hope that Eichel pans out. And when the trade happened like yesterday um, in the afternoon, the NHL tweeted, like, is this the new best top line in hockey? I'm like, did the golden Knights write this? Like who's tweeting this already? Like he hasn't (laughs) even played a game. Like you're just assuming that he's going to be like a superstar on this team. Like I I get, he's one of the more talented players in the NHL, but I literally like stared at it because I couldn't figure out if it. It's just because you hate the golden Knights. If you didn't hate the golden Knights, it probably would have a different. It would I'm have just such a saying, reaction. who's running that account? No shade to the people who run social media. Aaron Lowry, we love you. But love who's you. running that NHL account? Oh my goodness. So, I, had I don't like, know. It's too soon to tell for me. What about you, Jesse? I mean, I think we all breathe the collective sigh of like, okay, it's over. Like, yeah. right? Like, thank goodness. I do feel like that leak that Calgary was closing in on yes. it with the Kachuk trade out there. I do feel like that was to get Vegas to jump and move forward, right? Like it was a little Probably. play. That's kind of how I feel about that. Um, secondly, I find it so interesting. And Chris Peters actually, I, I think pointed this out 
that Vegas continues to be in a very much of a win now situation. They oh, are yeah. trading away all of their futures. They've done this year after year where they don't keep any of the guys that they draft and instead move them for pieces that can help them in the immediate future. Mm-hmm. It hasn't panned out yet. Uh, you know, you wonder if Eichel is that that missing piece, because again, Vegas has always been a strong team. No question yep. about it. But it's interesting because they're definitely not building it up, which the Minnesota Wild have gotten into that as well. And now for the first time, you're looking at a wild team that is building for the future, yeah. which is very exciting and, and d- two different paths. Right. Um, and then my third thing is, did you catch the snippet where Eichel said he felt like he was about to go to Minnesota and you have to yep. wonder and guarantee you next time we talk to Bill Guerin, we're going to see what was tossed out on the table. Cause it would have had to have been a hefty load. Right. I mean, you look at yeah. Alex Tuck, who's comparable to Alex Tuck on the wild. I'm not sure Do they want boldly Rossi, all of those guys together on top of like a greenway, maybe um, very, very interesting. The other interesting thing is I believe and correct me if I'm wrong, Buffalo uh, is not retaining any of a salary. So Vegas is eating that up. So that's probably another thing because I don't know that Minnesota could have kept it under cap. Taking well, can Vegas, Vegas has been over. Vegas has like money a year and a half. Vegas where, always has where money. Where is it coming from? House always where wins, Alexis. <laughs> the house always wins. That no. was like, that's where I thought you were going with your story at first was yeah. like the cap issue with Vegas. No. Um, because that was the other thing I was thinking about him. Like, and then has to play into the like win now thing. Cause they're not going to necessarily have money to maybe do these big contracts right now yeah. with their cap situation. So it's like, they're literally no pun intended. We talked about puns at the start, throwing puns all the chips into the middle of the table for this, yes. um, to try to win. And I mean, if Jack Eichel comes out of this healthy, they are going to be a, a dangerous top line. But yeah. then again, it's like, you know, Alex Tuck was great up there as well. So how much of an improvement is that going to be? So I don't know. It's there's, there's a lot of, of question marks. I don't think I would have ever thought Vegas was going to be the one who landed him. I mean, I, so, you know, what's funny is, and I, I tweeted kind of about this um, yesterday when the trade happened. Um, so I had, I, I Thursday morning, my boyfriend is getting out of bed to go to, to get ready for work. And I'm like, literally still like in a dead sleep. And the only words that I hear are golden nights, like whispering in my ear. And I'm like <laughs> half asleep and I'm like sleeping. And you know, like when you're like, is that a dream? Like who said that? Like, yeah. that's kind of the mindset I was in. And I'm yeah. like, why did he just say something about the golden nights? Like who cares about the golden nights? Like the wild aren't playing them soon. Like I'm trying to run through my sleepy head of like what possibly could be about the golden. <laughs> this nights isn't getting me out of bed. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, he comes back in the room like 20 minutes later. He's like, did you hear what I said? Eichel to the golden Knights." I was like, Oh, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So he got traded to the golden Knights. So, um, so I don't know. I just, that's not the team that I expected him to end up with. Um, but it also kind of seemed like fair game for anybody for given like what, they were asking it's like well like someone's gonna have to give all this up and I don't know who that's gonna be um but it it was interesting that he said that he thought for a little while there he was going to the wild because I think sometimes when trades are talked about and developing it's like are they really gonna maybe go there is that just like a rumor like you said with the Calgary thing like how how true was that are they just trying to get someone else to make a move um so I sound like it was close but yeah so wild fans are either taking a sigh of relief or or uh pretty upset right now, but I'm happy that the wild didn't end up with him. Yeah. I hope he, he does, you know, well in, in Vegas, obviously all the best to him and, do you and know? happy. I mean, well, do you like as every game except for against the wild and any important playoff games? He, I hope he does well. Okay. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you can tell he's excited to be somewhere new and that was a long journey and I'm sure, you know, stressful and exhausting for him um, to get out of a spot. He didn't want to play hockey in and end up somewhere else. So uh, that I'm excited for him about just don't score any goals against the wild, please. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Speaking of new faces in new places, ah, you like nice, that? That's nice. A, that's what, what we call Dr. Seuss? a segue. <laughs> segue with a rhyme. I told you I rap, rap in another career. <laughs> Cues of the Beast will probably be a rap today. Go check it out. Um, <laughs> no, Zach Parisi had his media availability earlier this week as he returns to the XL Energy Center on Sunday for the first time. Um, you know, Zach seems like he's in a, a good place, right? I think we all knew that. Again, we all knew the writing on the wall, so we don't need to belabor this <laughs> conversation at all. I'm curious to see what the Wild end up doing for his return back, yeah. right? Because there was... Which you guys will <laughs> obviously be listening to this after that, but... Yes, you'll have to let us know what you thought or how Zach reacts. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it was funny, you know, our buddy Dane Mizutani had asked Zach if it was going to be a revenge of any sorts. And Zach was like, love the question, Dane. <laughs> no, I know D- Dane just went for the joy and they immediately cut off availability afterward. They're like, all right, and we're done. Zach's all like, right, no, Dane, you can I'm- leave. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I have moved on, which he has. I mean, yeah. the only you thing have that to, I found, right? 
well, and you're with a new organization. You're not going to talk shit about you unless you're Jack Eichel. Right. You're not talking shit about the team that you're playing on. Right. Um, no, I think it is. And it sounds like he's doing fine. He's still a fourth liner out there, but he likes mm-hmm. Lou Lamarillo. He knows Anders Lee and Brock Nelson yeah. from past times. Um, you know, he's got that veteran presence. He knows Andy green from his days in New Jersey. The one thing that I did find was kind of funny that he had said, somebody had asked him about, you know, how is this different than when you went back to New Jersey for the first time? Right. As a member mm-hmm. of well, he's like, well, I, I chose to leave New Jersey. I didn't choose to leave the wild. <laughs> they didn't pay me to leave like they the wild did. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it'll Fair be point. <laughs> yeah, good for him. He's got his whole thing worked out. Um, you know, he gets to see family, but yeah, I just figured we had to acknowledge Zach Parisi because again, no matter how you felt about him toward the latter end of this, mm-hmm. this career with the wild, he was excited. You know, don't you lie to me and tell me you weren't excited on that 4th of July date when him and Ryan Suter. Yeah, I hate for the record. I need to air out my beef with people who are like, I didn't care that much. Like I knew it was the yeah. wild didn't do anything. It's like, shut up. You were excited. You, yes. I, we all heard it on the radio or saw it on TV or whatever. Yeah. And you were excited. So don't yes. even start with me every si- I remember having a dream. I was up at my cabin. Like I usually am. And I had a dream the night before. Cause that was when I was working with USA hockey too. So yeah. I was like, Oh, I had a dream that Parisian suitor came to the wild and how great would that be? And then like a couple hours later, it was real. And I was like, oh, I might be able to tell the future. Like, that's just, it's just something that I do. So yeah. very what cool. Are the wild winning the Stanley cup, Jesse, tell us. Mm, you don't want my answer. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> Hater. <laughs> Moving on. Speaking of people that will help the wild win a Stanley cup, Kirill Kaprizo finally gets that monkey off his back again. By now, there'll be two more games. He'll probably have 10 more goals in the span mm-hmm. of that. Um, mm-hmm. But he did have media availability, which you guys might wonder, why is that such a big deal? Because we <laughs> only get to talk to him when the moon rises in the Southern hemisphere and the temperature <laughs> is 37 degrees and the wind is blowing. No, the point is we don't get to talk to him very often. So it's very yeah. nice when we get to talk to him. And that's no slight to the PR department at all because they try their best, but his <laughs> English is, is very yeah. broken and got to get a translator. It's a whole thing, but to have him, um, come in and, and talk to media the other day and, and say he owned absolutely. He's like, yeah, the team is depending on me to score goals. And I didn't do that, but they know, you know, coaches know I was hard on, on myself. Mm-hmm. And I had actually directly asked myself, what did the coaches tell you? I mean, they know what kind of player you are. Did they tell you much or did they kind of leave you be? And he's like a little bit of both. He's like, but as we say in Russia, sometimes they need a kick in the ass. And so, you know, I'm sure they probably <laughs> yeah. did come a little hard on them, but, um, you mm-hmm. know, that game that he scores the overtime game winner on hockey mm-hmm. fights, cancer night, um, all the, the dramatics and storylines that go with it, but you saw him work his, his ass off that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that he hasn't been doing it continuously before, but you could see the frustration mount as he would try things, but him and Kevin Fiala, that game in particular did not let off the pedal. And it was tremendous to see. And, and what an unselfish play by Kevin Fiala, who's also a bit snake bitten to yeah. pass the puck over to Caprice off for that winner, knowing that that was something he needed. The interesting thing too, that Caprice off came out with and said was that he, has actually usually started the season slow yes, in the last I, I time. thought that was funny too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, Oh, okay. So we're not worried. And he's like, yeah. well, I was a little worried. Like <laughs> I was getting a little worried, but he had <clears throat> talked about how he, it took him 10 games to score one time. Right. And he finally did. And the floodgates open, which mm-hmm. we've predicted for many a times. Alexis. Yes. And we were finally right. As, as one would be when you continue to pre- predict yeah. the same thing. Over yeah. And over again. No, I mean, it was just, it was good prediction. That's what it is. Yeah. It's knowledge. Smots. We're we got smart. the smots. Yeah. So do you <laughs> um, think, I mean, is Caprice off popping off now? Are we, ex- I mean, is a goal a game too much to expect at this point? <laughs> um, well, a couple things about this one, I think, and we've seen this out of Caprice off um, since he joined the team. Um, and like Jesse said, media does not get to talk to him a ton. So when we do hear from him, um, it, it's far and few between. Um, but it seems like he has a tremendous amount of accountability for a young kid and don't start with the, Oh, he's not young anymore. He's 26. I don't care. He's a young kid. How old are you? (laughs) 26. All right. You know what? It's, it's fine. I, I don't want to talk about it. Um, okay. So I had like a meltdown when I turned 24, I'm like, there's no going back from here. Um, but he's got a tremendous amount of accountability as a young kid in this league that not that I don't think other players don't have it, but you don't always hear them like outwardly say it like Kaprizov does where he's like, yeah, I like was not doing a good job and I was trying too hard and I wasn't doing the right things or whatever it may be. He says those things and he acknowledges that like he is 
the one of the biggest parts, if not the biggest part of this team and, and their, you know, overall success on the season. So for him to recognize that, acknowledge that and take accountability when things aren't going the way that they need to go for him. I, that makes me proud as somebody who covers this team and a fan of this team, knowing that there's players like that on the team. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing and a sense of humor uh, through it all. Right. Like it could be easy to be super frustrated and be like, you know, not want to talk about it and kind of dodge the question or give really simple answers, but no, he takes accountability. He has fun with it. Um, and, and he's honest with, with Mm -hmm. me. And I think that's really important. Um, so that, first of all, second of all, you kind of touched on it as well. And we talked about this in the last episode about like, you know, it's not just Kirill who needs to start scoring. Kevin needs to start scoring as well, because those two are kind of, they're the mainstay of the wild offense and, and they, them being successful is going to equal team success. And on that play in overtime where Kirill scored the game winner, um, I mean, Kevin Fiala was the catalyst to that goal. I mean, without mm-hmm. him hustling through the neutral zone, fighting off the defender, making the play, um, that opportunity never happens for Kirill in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would have been very easy for Kevin to just take the shot or try to make the play himself or do right. it all because he needs that goal too, like you said, Jesse. But for him to recognize, and I think Kevin um, even said this, um, in either the post game or something, he said something to the effect of, you know, like I, I knew if I got it to Krill, all he had to do was one time and he had a wide open net. So he was very yeah. aware of what was happening. He made the play, got Krill the goal. And hopefully like Krill said in his presser, this is going to open the floodgates and he will start getting more goals. And we've both been saying this, Jesse. And I think a lot of people have been saying this, that he just needed to get one. However, mm-hmm. that one goal came, whether it's an empty netter, a fluky goal, a, a high skilled goal, he needed one to get one under his belt, get a little bit of confidence going and then moving forward, know that, okay, that one is out of the way. And I always say this, um, on broadcast when I'm covering uh, sports, um, and I, I find it to be ex- extremely true. The more and more I watch sports is and it applies to a score in a game as well as a player trying to rack up points, the longer it takes to get that first one, that first goal, that first point, that first whatever, the harder it feels like it's going to be to actually do it. So the longer a team stays scoreless in a game, the harder that first goal feels, the longer a player goes without a goal, the harder it feels. Mm -hmm. And so just to get that one, even if it takes you a while, I often find that things go well uh, more often than not from there. Um, And I think that's going to happen happened for Kirill here. And like we said, we're recording this on a Friday as usual. Hopefully by Monday, he's got a handful of other goals. 10 or 10, 10 or more. Otherwise we won't be satisfied. So let's do it. Kirill make us look smart. (laughs) Hey, Sidney Crosby's not playing for the Penguins, whatever. They can light it up. Uh, no, I mean, and it's such a mental game, right? It speaks to again, how hockey's mental game and and you got to work through that. And he, he did. I mean, he kept to it. It was going to happen. He wasn't going to go scoreless yeah. for all 82, which actually that'd be just impressive. Like if you, if that's just, wow, <laughs> he'd have to try harder to do that than to not, he gets score, an empty net opportunity and he just <laughs> passes on it. He's like, nah, not at this nuts. point. Let's just, yeah. <laughs> have you ever heard what empty net goals are? There Wait. was a, I believe, um, Anaheim ducks. I forget the player. And this was back in early two thousands, maybe. And he skated down and he, could have scored the empty netter, but instead he like wrapped it around the, the net because he didn't want to score. And everybody, the media asked like, why didn't you, uh, why didn't you score? And he's like, empty net goals are for bitches. <laughs> I was like, I think he might've used a different word, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, yeah. So it was like something, but it just to that effect, like, wow. wow. All right. Okay. So we All don't right. want empty net goals. Got it. <laughs> Got it. That's an Good interesting take. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a guy that didn't score very often either. So even funnier, very interesting take for a low scoring player. Very exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one final Minnesota wild or two final Minnesota wild notes, you know, on the Caprice off subject, obviously Matt Zuccarello coming back soon, mm-hmm. hopefully would be very good. It sounds like him and Rem Pitlick are, they should be cleared today, which is a Friday. They will not travel to Pittsburgh. They will skate. They would be available to the team on Sunday against the mm-hmm. Islanders. Um, and I believe Dean Evison had said he is going to assess what the guys want to do. He said last year, Jonas Berdeen was the only guy that they put right into a game situation coming out of protocol. Um, Cause naturally these guys are doing what they can, you know, but right. Are you game ready? I don't know. And are you going to do that against the Islanders? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you got to imagine that once Zuki gets back, him and Caprice off are going to combine for some, some good things again. Now that that monkey's off his back um, and Callan Addison, speaking to guys then coming back, Alex Galagoski, who has been injured. He makes his return on Saturday against the Pittsburgh Penguins, um, which means Callan Addison, who did a great job. Yeah. in his, in his time, his couple games up here this year, uh, back down to Iowa. Alexis, do you think that 
we will get more glimpses. And I mean that in the sense of, do you think that Callen could get called back up in favor of, you know, a, some, uh, maybe a John Merrill sitting out sure. or something like that? Is that a possibility or is that something you'd like to see? Um, well, I mean, no offense to the guys on the current Minnesota wild roster, but yeah, I do hope Kalen gets some more chances because he's been impressive, even dating back to last year when he had opportunities. And when we've talked to, you know, to him on the podcast, like talking about what he can bring to this Minnesota wild team and seeing that on the ice, Mm -hmm. um, it's been impressive. I've really, really liked what he's been able to do. Um, I think he's got his demeanor is very Jared Spurgeon like, but his his play is very Matt Dumba like, right? Like he's a quiet, calm, cool, collected guy, but he also is very offensive minded and is not afraid to necessarily take those chances to be offensive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think he's just a very unique style of defenseman that a lot of teams, uh, you know, uh, could benefit from having a guy like that in their lineup. So yeah, I I'm looking forward to the next opportunity. We get him up here. He obviously got a goal in that Ottawa game, um, which, which t- turned out to be a very important goal. The wild looked like they were rolling early, but that, uh, every goal ended up mattering in that game. Oh, so weird. Did it nice. go into overtime? Like, yeah, all weird. <laughs> their games at home have been, yeah. It's great. So. Yeah. So it's, um, it was nice to see him get on the board there. And I can't remember who it was who said this. And Jesse, I know you and I have kind of talked about this as well. Um, but something about Callan Addison that I'm really impressed with is the fact that you don't notice him when he's in the game. And that I mean that in the best way possible, right? Like, sure. like he's not making the mistakes that are glaring and correct. yeah, especially an um, offensive defenseman like that, where the mistakes right. can be like bat dumba, unfortunately. Right. right? Like yeah. um, a lot of times when defensemen slide into a lineup or they're becoming part of a new team or they're like Kalen, where they're going from the AHL to the NHL, um, sometimes be noticeable is like the worst thing that you can do, right? Mm-hmm. You just want to slide into that lineup and make the right plays, be quiet about it, be calm, cool, and collected and get the job done. Um, yeah. Very different than when forwards come in the lineup, you want them to be explosive and noticeable and a part of everything. Um, and I thought Kalen did a fantastic job of that, of not making those mistakes you sometimes see the young guys make, um, especially in that Ottawa game. It was a very weird game, a hectic game. The wild were struggling at bits um, of time. It was an offensive game. There was a lot of things happening and to still slide into that lineup and be relatively unnoticeable in the best way possible, Mm -hmm. I thought was really impressive. So as much as I like the defenders that the wild have now and the pairings they have now, I'm hoping to see more of Callen um, up on that Minnesota wild roster um, in the near future, because I think he brings a lot of value to the team. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I'm, I'm sure we will. And again, congrats to him on his first goal. Yeah. He joked. He's like, they don't ask how it went in. And I told him like, (laughs) well, it was better than Brandon Duhame's first goal. And he's like, that's true. So you take those as you get them. That's going to do it for our first segment. Before we do go reminder to go on to better edge. I know I mentioned it in our Vegas (laughs) chit chat very sneakily because, you know, I love connections. Um, (laughs) Betteredge.com obviously offers all sorts of sports betting, very legal sports betting, plus a very fun social aspect. But Beat the Butte has kicked off. I don't know if you guys saw who won the inaugural one. I was, was that was an was impressive. Me. That was Thank good, you. Jesse. I, I I jumped on Better Edge's uh, app after the day after to see how that all unfolded. I'm like, way to go, Jesse. Thank Thanks, you. Um. Yes, yeah, so we got even more people included in it. So I appreciate everybody that joined. We're going to do that twice a week. So I'm mm-hmm. going to take on Tuesdays. Alexis is going to take on Thursdays. Yes, I saw your so, 2 a.m. email. I'm on board. You like that? <laughs> Sometimes I have good ideas. No, and that wasn't my <laughs> idea. That was what they wanted. I just forgot to tell you. Um, no, so be sure to be sure to do that because then you get a chance to beat both buttes mm-hmm. or maybe just Alexis or maybe just me. Who knows? Probably, Probably just me. <laughs> Probably just Alexis. Um, so be sure to check out their app for that. Don't forget uh, code buttes, B-E-A-U-T-S gets you a free $10 to play with. So there's really no excuse to not mm-hmm. come have fun and uh, and try to beat the butte. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Alexis and I are going to dive into a hot button topic Kirill Kaprizov versus Marion Gabrick what do we think stay tuned to find out we'll be right back it's hockey season baby and the best way to head into a new season is to be fully equipped with all the merch you need to cheer on your favorite teams oh and some Bardown Beauties merch too right right we've got you covered literally head over to teespring.com where you can find all kinds of custom design Bardown Beauties apparel plus so much more we're back. We are going to use this opportunity during segment two to discuss a very hot topic. And no, it's not our up for debate thing. We like <laughs> when you engage in that on Twitter and increase our engagement on there. Yep. No, instead, it is going to be Kirill Kaprizov versus Marion Gabrick. Marion Gabrick, obviously, recently announcing his retirement. Truthfully, I forgot that he was even still technically in the league. No, <laughs> no slight, but right? Like, 
whatever, man. And Kirill Kaprizov is Kirill Kaprizov. You might think that this could be very one-sided and it probably is very one-sided, but uh, we were going to have Brian Rolston on to talk about it and he couldn't make it this week. So now we're filling it in uh, Alexis. Yep. What are you, I mean, how old were you when Mary Gabrick <laughs> came onto the scene? Let's start there just to well, get credibilities I was going. Born in 1995. Um, so yeah, I was a little, little child when Mary Gabrick was uh, in his prime with the Minnesota wild, but I do remember watching many a games where Marion Gabrick had tremendous performances. I will never forget his five goal game against the New York Rangers. That is like one of the highlights of my life so far, like my life, not my hockey life, like my life watching Marion Gabrick <laughs> score those five goals. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do remember a lot of Marion Gabrick's career, even though I was really little, just because he was at the time, like the Minnesota wilds, Kirill Kaprizov, right? Like people watched, yeah. Marian, they watched the wild for Marion Gabrick. If you were going to tune into a wild game, that was the guy to watch. He was the guy who was a menace to other teams. Um, and he always seemed to have something up his sleeve. So I, I was young, but I remember a lot of his career and I was very, very sad when he was no longer a member of the Minnesota wild, uh, because he, he was a big part of excitement early on, uh, for the Minnesota wild when they became part of the NHL. I mean, absolutely. He electrified the entire fan base, right? I think you, you didn't know what to expect, right? Cause Minnesota wild were new and he was there. And so you were like, oh yeah, good. We should have a really good hockey player. And he was, he was, he was tremendous. I mean, he, Kirill Kaprizov, of course, breaks all of the rookie records that Marion had set for right. this franchise, but it took that long for that franchise to get a player of that capability. I mean, definitely without question, Gabrick's formative years, whether you want to argue about his injuries or not, which I know my mother, Kim Pierce, for instance, still despises <laughs> the man because he was hurt all the time. But I mean, he did. I mean, he had an 83 point year one year. That's tremendous. Two yeah. thirty, you know, three straight, excuse me, 30 plus goal years, including 140. Um, you love you love things like that, you know, especially that's during the Jacques Lemire tenure as yeah. well. Let's not forget, right, where it was a very defense trap, mm -hmm. everything not scoring. But Marion Gabrick went out and did that. My best memory is when I think it was Martin Brodeur who went and tried to Dominic cut Kashuk. Dominic Dominic Kashuk. Kashuk. I knew it was yes. one of the two legend goalies <laughs> and just like flies Gabby over his back. And it was yeah. hilarious. Um, no, I mean, so it is, it's, it's hard to argue. And I think everybody today is like, well, no, Kirill Caprice off is a lot mm -hmm. better. Probably right. But I want to acknowledge they're different players, yeah. right? Just incredibly different players. Kirill Caprice off is a playmaker. In addition mm -hmm. to being a creative scorer, Gabby just was really good at stick handling and putting the puck in the back mm -hmm. of the net. Yeah. And I think the other thing that makes them really different is, and I have a hard time to begin with, like, I just have a hard idea, a hard time with the concept of comparing players from different eras, um, in any sport. Yes. I think that's hard to do to LeBron begin versus with. Michael baby. Right? I'm so <laughs> sick of that damn argument. I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to do because first of all, sports change over time rules change. Like think about even like the two line pass that rule changed from the time yeah. that Marion Gabbard played to the time Kirill Kaprizov played that opened mm -hmm. up scoring a little bit more, right. And break out plays and all of that. So there's so many things that change in sports between from rules to teams, like more teams in the league, more players in the league, athletes only get better over time. So it's really hard to do these kind of comparisons. Um, but if you put all of that aside and you just think, all right, here's what this player did. Here's what that player did. How does this compare? Something that I've always been stuck on when it comes to comparing these two is that Marion Gabrick was a very like straight line player. Like he had a lot yes. of speed going straight up and down the ice. Um, he was great on like breakaway opportunities and kind of peeling away from defenders. Like that's where he really thrived. And he was a great shooter as well. Like he could, mm -hmm. he knew how to pick a spot, He'd pick the spot and God, put it, it there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was, he was a fast player. He moved well, um, you know, up and down the ice and, and he could score. Kirill Kaprizov is more, you know, he finds himself all over the ice. And even in just one sequence where Kirill will have the, the puck on a stick, he is all over the place. I mean, he seems to touch every part of the offensive zone every single time that he's out there, whether he's the one scoring a goal, getting an assist, or just kind of wreaking havoc in the offensive zone. And that's yeah. where Gabby wasn't really that kind of player. I mean, he could get those breakout passes and he could get it on a stick and put it in the back of the net. Um, but he wasn't as much of a dynamic kind of, you know, we talk about Kirill Kaprizov's edges all the time and the way he skates and moves his body. Gabby was not like that. No, if he um, did, he'd probably break his groin or whatever. Right. Yeah. Groin. Break that his was groin. That's yeah. what you do to your groin. <laughs> you break it. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But that was his problem. He'd yes. re-injure his groin consistently time and time again. And it was so, because he was fast, right? I mean, he had uh -huh. the power in his legs too. He, I think he won the fastest skating competition 
in one of the all-star games, which when has a wild player gone in and done anything in an all-star game <laughs> to like win. So like credit to him for yeah, that. Yeah, Kirill, we're waiting on you. He's got the edge on you there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at Gabby's points, he's d literally almost dead even for goals and assists 407 for goals, 408 for assists over a thousand games played um, 71 game winning goals in his career. I think that's a pretty impressive number as well. I mean, you, you yeah. think about superstars and their ability to close out games and kind of be that deciding factor in a game. Um, I think that's a really important stat when it comes to looking at these kind of things, because superstars need to be able to get the job done. So to say he had 71 game winning goals in his career is, is pretty impressive as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to compare the two and even just like the pieces around certain players on a team. When you talk about comparisons, right? Like, you know, certain think about the lines that Gabrick played with and the teams Gabrick played with. And you brought up a great point about Jacques Lemaire being a very defensive minded coach. If they had an offensive minded coach, would Gabrick have mm -hmm. even more points? I mean, it's, it is very difficult to compare these kind of things. Um, and it's sad that these are literally the only two players we have to compare in a Minnesota wild history where it's like, yep, you either think Gabrick's are the best or you think Kirill is the best. Those are your, two I mean, options. it would have been hilarious if Gabrick had signed that 10 year, $80 million contract yeah. back in the day. And we'll see what would have transpired and how that would have worked out. I'm sure wild fans would have still hated them just yeah. as much as they do now. Um, I mean, Gabrick also won a Stanley cup with the LA Kings. True. Do you think Kaprizov? I'm sorry, Wild fans, you're going to hate. Don't me do it. it. Is he going to win a Stanley Cup? Period. How I won't say a team name. Okay. I'll leave it vague. Is Kirill Kaprizov going to end up on a team that wins the Stanley Cup? Because that's hard, right? It's not easy. And yep. he was with that LA Kings. I mean, we thought, I, yeah. Do you think he does it? Do you think Kaprizov is going to be part of a cup winning team? I don't know that Gabby had a huge hand in that cup. Mind right. You, but. Um, I do think that Kirill Kaprizov is the kind of player who is good enough to carry a team to the Stanley cup. Let me start there. Right. Like, I think he's the kind of player that you do build a team around. We've talked about this with the wild all the time. And even, you know, members of the wild and stuff talk about the fact that you build this team around Kaprizov, you know, that everything goes through him in a sense. And, um, every single NHL Stanley cup winning team, I think has a player or a line where you point to and say, they are a big reason that this job got done. And I think Kirill mm -hmm. Kaprizov could be the guy that fans and media are pointing to someday saying he is the reason this team won a Stanley cup. Now, whether that's with the wild or a different team years down the road is still to be determined. Um, but mm -hmm. I think he has the ability, um, to do that. I think the other thing that makes me believe that he'll get there some point is you see this a lot with superstars. We talk about the Jack Eichel thing in segment one, right? Superstars mm -hmm. want to be a part of winning teams. That is part of what makes them right. a superstar and that mentality that makes them a good player. So they want to be involved in organizations that are going to win. Um, and I, that's a big reason wild fans were scared. Kirill wouldn't resign here. They're like, does he think we're not going to win a Stanley cup? Does he want to go somewhere else? Like what's he the probably deal? could have turned down a 10 year, $80 million yep. contract. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I think that he, because of his, his, you know, skills as an athlete and the mindset we've already seen from him, um, in only a short amount of time here in the NHL and in Minnesota. Minnesota is that if he's not going to win here to hell with Minnesota, he's going to go win that Stanley cup somewhere else. So I do right. have faith that he will have one at some point in his career and hopefully many. Um, and hopefully they're all with the Minnesota wild starting this year. And then for every year moving forward for a long period of time. <laughs> um, but if it's yeah. not here, I do think it would be somewhere else for sure. Two final food for thought question type discussion things. Um, you know, one other big comparison I think you could make between Kirill and, and Gabrick is that both are very large in their countries, right? Like Kirill yes. Kaprizov is a God and Gabrick is a God to Slovakia and, and Kaprizov in Russia, excuse me. Um, so, I mean, that's always very interesting, right? Like they're very they're and they're very attached to their countries and mm -hmm. you love that. I think that's just kind of a unique thing that I wanted to draw a comparison to. Um, and then kind of final question, more or less related to Gabrick first ever pair player selected in the, in the expansion mm -hmm. draft by the Minnesota, you know, where I'm going with this, you know what I'm going to ask, right? <laughs> He's now retired. Is his jersey hung before Miko Koivu's <laughs> in those rafters next to that number one fans jersey? Oh my God. We're really reopening this can of worms. Um mm -hmm. I have been I have advocated for retiring Miko Koivu's jersey. And I know that a lot of people, and I've had discussions with people about this, like our friends on social media who also work for the wild or or in sports, and just with the average person as well, the average fan 
talking about like, is that kind of like a consolation prize? Is that like a classic Minnesota saying like, we like him. So let's hang his Jersey in the round. And he liked us. And he liked us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so I do understand people's perspective there where it's like, well, he didn't help the wild win a Stanley cup. He didn't, you know, it wasn't like he was Wayne Gretzky 2.0, right? Like he was a very talented hockey player. He did a lot of good things for this team, but at the end of the day, yeah, there's a point to be made there that he never helped the team win a Stanley cup. And, and can you really define a player as you know, an all time great in, in a, uh, among a team if they don't do that. So there's a point to be made there. I still do stand by the fact though, that I think Miko Koiva's jersey should be retired. Um, I also would not have a problem with retiring Marion Gabrick's, um, jersey, um, for two reasons. One, because we are still talking about him today. We are comparing him right. to the current right. greatest player that the wild have on their roster and making an argument that he, you know, is Marion Gabrick better than Karoka Prisov. So the fact that we're still talking about him says that he had an impact on this team um, and, and making a comparison to Karoka Prisov. Anyone who gets that comparison is in pretty uh, high regard, right? So that, and then the fact that he was the first overall pick, there's nostalgia there. Us Minnesotans love nostalgia. I would mm-hmm. love to see his jersey hanging in the rafters and be reminded of that every time I step into the Exxon Energy Center, um, that this is where it all started. So does it happen before Miko Koivu? Probably not. I think if they're going to do both, I think Miko would get the honors first. And now granted, like we just talked about Marion Gabbard just officially retired. So that could be something coming down the line as Miko retired earlier on in, uh, in the season. But I think if it happens, Miko gets his first and Gabrick would get his second, but they were both two very important pieces in the Minnesota wild as they became a part of the NHL. What do you, what's your take on that, Jesse? Um, I mean, I have very high standards for retiring. Yeah, you do (laughs) I just do. I mean, so I would, I would say like, I get the sentimental of, I forget, are you pro Miko retirement or no, I'm back and forth because in my opinion, you retire a Jersey of somebody that is hall of fame bound or very, very close. Gabrick fits more of those boxes in my mind, just as a player on, on a, as a whole, right? Like across the league, he was very revered. Miko's very revered here. I don't think he was ever revered by anybody else in the league, whereas Mary, you know, so I think in, and that's where I think a Jersey being raised, that player should be recognized by everybody. Like, Oh yeah, that person. And Gabrick holds that. So that's the only reason I would maybe put Gabrick. However, again, toward the end of his career, I think there was a lot of animosity from wild fans. I being one of them too, because that was when I was very into hockey and I was like, God, I just so annoyed with how hurt he is all the time. So, I mean, I, I could see where Miko's should be retired first. I don't know you're probably going to get a Miko before a Gabby. I, but I think they should consider Gabrick. I don't, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's so new. I'm not sure that that's even been discussed, but that would be, uh, that'd be my hot take. So I, uh, we'll see. We got more up for debate coming at Mm you in segment three. Alexis and I get a little feisty. So, uh, yeah, we actually, we we get a little mad this time. Normally, normally we're pretty good and we just, we disagree just to have a disagreement, but this time I I think we're, we're on different pages. What's it about? Stay tuned (laughs) to find out. (laughs) We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. This is producer Fred. I just want to make sure everybody was up to date on every single thing that's going on with Bardown Beauties for season three. We've got shirts coming out. We've got some sweepstakes. We've got some announcements. Like, follow, share. You'll be right on top of all the news. Um, All right. Let's move on to our segment three. Speaking of like Marcus Foligno or MVPs of things. Alexis, early season MVP, and everyone came at you because they of course did. you included Marcus Foligno, but Cam Talbot and Nico Sturm <laughs> also included. Who is your M- early season MVP for the Minnesota Wild? I, I'm not even going with Marcus. Like people are just like, but you can't it. take Nico because Nico is mine. I'm not taking Nico. So well, you're taking. Wow, we never fight during up for debate. We're gonna fight this week. Um, <laughs> normally we're just like, I'll pick this one so we don't argue. <laughs> no, this week it's all hate. Um, no, <laughs> I'm not even picking Marcus. Like I, you, everyone knows I love Marcus, obviously, but um, I'm I'm going with Cam Talbot. Um, and I even had a tough time like picking three people to put for this because I feel like so many different guys have stood out in different ways and contributed in different ways that are either a little bit surprising based on like previous seasons play or just ended up being really useful to some of the wilds wins. So picking it, narrowing it down to three was tough enough for me. Um, but, uh, I'm going to go with camp Talbot just because I think heading into the season, 
a lot of people, and it's still early. I know it's still early, but a lot of people, including Jesse and I talked about, can Cam play like he did the season before he's getting a little bit older. Um, he might not get as many starts because he's getting a little bit older. Uh, we just weren't sure what to expect out of him. Like most goalies, once they get to that point in their career, it was nothing against Cam. It was just a matter of age and, and knowing, uh, these kind of trends and goaltenders, which and sounds so, like it's against Cam. I mean, but yeah, and not. I stand by it. I stand by it. It's <laughs> no <good>. shade <laughs> at all. We love you. Um, but yeah, so we, we've had some conversations of, can he maintain that pace of play that he gave us last year, which was so critical to the wild success. Um, and very early on in the season, I think he's shown that he can, and he's been a big part of some wild wins. He's been a big part of some periods where the wild have struggled and he's kept them in it and kept the, their opponents to maybe only a goal. I mean, going back to like the Seattle game where that second period could have easily been a four or five goal period for Seattle. And he kept it just to one. So there's been a lot of games that he's played a critical role in. He's looked good. It's not like he's just gotten like these lucky bounces and been in the right spot at the right time. He's made impressive saves. Um, um, he's been calm and cool and collected just like last year, which everybody loved about him. Um, and, and what I love about him as well. And I think that if the wild have a successful season this year, which they are on pace to do based on the way they've been playing, um, he's going to be an important part of that. And if the wild continue mm -hmm. to play close games, like they're playing right where they're playing these one goal games, these overtime games, that's going to be hard to continue that kind of pace. But if that's mm -hmm. the kind of style that the Minnesota wild are going to be playing, we are going to need a goaltender who can make big saves at big times and keep their team in it. So Cam Talbot's my early season MVP. Um, Jesse, make your argument for Nico. I mean, Nico, I picked as my breakout player and I think he's already lived up to that. And yeah. some, I just, I've been a fan of his since last year. I just love the way he plays and he gets better and better every single game. And he's consistently doing, I mean, that entire fourth line has done really, really well. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Nick Bukestead, who I have kind of tossed some questions at, like, can you do this? Like <laughs> he's played his role. I really love it. Um, no. And I think Nico is the kind of guy that you need to help get you through the season, right? You do need those fourth line grinders and you do need, and he knows that and he accepts that and he relishes in it and he can put the puck in the net at the mm -hmm. same time too. Right. I mean, you certainly want to get your top two lines going more consistently, but if they can't, it's really nice that your fourth line's contributing and doing everything that they can. And again, Nico is such a, a large part of that. And mm -hmm. I just see him really becoming a very stout NHL -er. So that's probably a little bit of a bias, but I also think he has the grit in him to be a true game changer for the wild and to really help them. And again, when it comes to playoffs, you need a guy like Nico mm -hmm. to push you through and Marcus too. I mean, I think Felino yeah. is also a very large part of that, but yeah, for namesake, we're just going to leave Felino out on the side because <laughs> we give him enough love. Yeah. All the time. I would say my other um, kind of tip of the hat and okay. somebody I might've considered would be Ryan Hartman. I, I think thought he's about putting really, him in there. I yeah, did. I did. I've been really, really proud. And I said last year, I loved him at center more than I love Matt wing. Mm -hmm. And this year just solidifies that. I think he's done really, really well up the middle. Um, again, another gritty guy. I just like the gritty guys. Like, yeah. let's get in there. Let's go. Um, so yeah, but Nico Sturm, he's my bet. I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, well, and I think the other thing too, and the reason I included Nico Sturm was I felt like I had to put a fourth liner in there as an option because yeah. the fourth line has played so well. And in some of those games where the wild struggled or went through stretches of a game where they weren't playing well, the fourth line continuously showed up. So I'm like, I got to either put Nico Sturm in here or Nick Bukestad were kind of the two I was going between. And I know Jesse, you and I always say like, we low key, like have like a little mini fan club for Nico. We're always rooting yeah. for him to succeed. We so have like, a lot of fan clubs. Him. If we're we honest, like we have, we have, plenty for like Matt Dumba reasons, for, yeah. for hype, hype over <laughs> hype there. Man, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Lots of <laughs> like, stuff. So I had to include Nico. Cause I'm like, I have a feeling I, I had a feeling that was who you were going to pick. Um, and plus I, I couldn't leave off a fourth liner with the way they've played so far. And like you said, Jesse, a, a good team can roll any line and, and expect mm -hmm. success out of them. And I think we've seen that so far with the wild. Um, and, and hopefully the fourth line continues to play like that because when things aren't going your way in a game, you got to rely on that fourth line to just get out there and do all the work that no one else wants to do so that the top lines yes. can get some goals. And, and they've done that so far. Exactly. And we'll talk more about Tam Calbit in our cues with the Buttes. I will yep. reserve my comments on why I <laughs> not the MVP for oh, there. Okay. All right. I got, I nice got a little things. plug got to get thoughts. people over to cues. <laughs> you like that? 
That's you want to hear that. Um, nope, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. We just signed on for another year. Excited to be a part of that brand as it continues yeah. to grow and grow. Shout out to Soda Stick, our presenting sponsors. Don't forget to grab your Marcus Foligno shirts. I believe they are going to just continue to try to keep up with demand. Yep. Um, in case you guys missed it, Marcus, very, very grateful for the over $1,000 that mm-hmm. has now been donated to the Janice Foligno Foundation. So shout out to Soda Stick for helping us do that. Shout out to Better Edge, B-E-T-T-O-R edge.com code buttes b-e-a-u-t-s gets you a free ten dollars to play with and uh beat the butte try your hand at being better than me and alexis not mm-hmm. in life but like in, in well they, in, they uh, won 60 at that <laughs> me they would i mean i you know i like to i have my bar low me so, on a bad day luck. sure <laughs> yeah exactly so shout out to them uh shout out to jim beam again cheers to you send me your jim beam recipes i am looking to up whiskey season baby it's whiskey <laughs> season we love it we love whiskey winter that's gonna be a new thing Hashtag whiskey <laughs> winter um and and to tony hoagland at statefarminsurance.com don't forget to check out our youtube cues with the buttes exclusive plus other fun content and clips follow us on all of our social media channels interact engage we love you guys you're awesome and no shout out to fred this week because he's fired again oh i was you know i was gonna tell fred that we were gonna make it through the whole episode without firing oh sorry no he just did it he's fine yeah if you guys are interested in starting a podcast if you have a video if you have other marketing things um that you'd like to do social media help you can work with us. We would love to work with you. We're fun to work with. We're super fun to work with. And maybe Avery usually takes along. She's my favorite coworker. Always. Yeah. She seals she's the deal. Time. She's the closer. I like to call her the closer. <laughs> Avery uh, always be she, closing. <laughs> she's always ABC. I'm teaching her the ABCs, the important ABCs of life. Always, always be, be closing. closing. <laughs> always be closing. Uh, yeah. So New Boy Studios, we offer it all. Please uh, give us a look uh, over at newboystudios.com and, and give us a consideration because mama needs the money so mm-hmm. it's holiday season it Let's is holiday it. season who's gonna buy these holiday. christmas gifts come yes, on yes <laughs> exactly so again thank you we've run this on long enough we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and uh check us out next week have a good day.